I didn't have the confidence. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think that I could have my own website or, you know, have an email list. Like, what would I even say to them? It was all so far out of, you know, anything that I was comfortable with doing. And now to look back and say, you know, I've had my website and, you know, my private Facebook community and an email list and all these crazy things I never thought I would do. I want to welcome everybody for joining us this morning. This is Heather Quizzle TV. My name is Heather Quizzle, and I help women in relationship-driven businesses to get the confidence, the focus, and the mindset game to get the life and the business they want. I'm going to introduce you today and let you hear just so much amazing from Jenna Proctor. And Jenna and I met Gosh, I can't even remember how we met. We're going to have to. I was thinking about that. I said, how did we meet? And I don't even remember. It's just kind of, we just instantly connected. It was amazing. I loved it. You know what? I just got it. I knew we were connected by Lena. We were connected by Lena. Yes. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Lena. Yes. And Jenna has been rocking my own Pinterest world with her magic. And I'm just excited to bring her to you. My goal in doing interviews and bringing you these other voices is to give you an idea of all these various snapshots of what it can look like to do the scary thing, to jump into the unknown, to step out from behind the safety net of traditional work. And I'm just excited to connect with Jenna, uh, a fellow teacher as well. So let me just highlight Jenna for you and then I'll let her connect. But like I said, Jenna is doing amazing work for me. Uh, uh, My Pinterest on my end, if you are a Pinterest goer, she's been cleaning up all my stuff, making me look branded, professional, legit. She, um, you know, came into business ownership like many of us with a lot of fears. And we're going to dive into that today. So Jenna, please tell us more about your life, your business, and what that looks like today. Yes. So um, me, as of now, I am a Pinterest strategist and I work with female entrepreneurs who are ready to escape the social media rat race and they're seeking to increase their brand visibility and website traffic for free, so all organically, no paid ads, while spending less time online. So that is the whole of what I offer and the whole purpose that I exist is to really just get that time back. And so it wasn't always like that though. I started out as a teacher professionally. I taught for almost seven years and then actually, I don't know if you know this part, Heather, I quit teaching twice. I quit teaching twice. I quit. um, I didn't go back after having my youngest. And then I started back just before she was one. And then I taught for a couple of months. And it really just, I had this pull that it just was not what I was supposed to be doing. It wasn't, it wasn't fitting. It wasn't fitting with our family life. And I just, I really just felt pulled to do more and have more to offer you know, the people that I was reaching out to and my family as well. So I quit in September of 2016 with no plan other than I know that I'm supposed to be doing more while being able to be, you know, with my kids because they are, you know, now three and five. So I still have very young kids and I was in no way, had no plan whatsoever. So you say doing it scared, doing it completely cluelessly scared because I just knew I had to do it. I had to just just leap and have that faith that it would, it would work out. And so basically I went from, you know, teaching and saying, okay, you know, let's, let's find something that I can do. Um, And I got started as a virtual assistant, basically just going in and doing, you know, whatever other women in these, you know, established businesses needed help with. So I was a, a really solid support piece and eventually, you know, realized that I, I wanted to be like this woman I was supporting. Whereas initially, you know, again, you talk about confidence. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think that I could have my own website or, you know, have an email list. Like what would I even say to them? It was all so far out of, you know, anything that I was comfortable with doing. And now to look back and say, you know, I've had my website and, you know, my private Facebook community and an email list and all these crazy things I never thought I would do um, around May and June of 2016 is when I really started all of that. So, you know, coming up on a year that I've really made that transition into really 
stepping up and having my own business instead of just being that support piece. So how did you, this is so good, Jenna, and I love multiple pieces of this story, and I knew this was going to be so good, is number one, you just knew that, like, what you were doing in teaching, well, don't get me wrong, because I am a teacher too and taught for 10 years, but you knew that that wasn't where you belonged, right? So you Absolutely. take the first hard step, um, the first, you know, clueless step and just say, well, I know that's not it. I know that's not, I, I don't know what it is, but I know it's not that. Yeah. Um, and then you just started feeling your way. I think what I'm hearing is you started feeling your way into your path by realizing what it wasn't. All right. So we get into virtual assistance. That's not it either. No, nope. but it's it was closer. Closer. Yes. Right. Yes. It's definitely been a journey. So when did you, how did you get into Pinterest strategy? So with one of my very first um, virtual assistant clients, she was a food blogger. And so I got started with Pinterest with her because she wanted to kind of have everything overhauled and, you know, she's like, I don't have time to do it. Will you, you know, she had a course. And so I went through the course that she had and I I loved it. I loved the way that it worked. I love that Pinterest is a search engine. Um, so just, I guess that, you know, intellectual side, you know, being a teacher, I like the word play that you get on coming up with, you know, well, how else will people search for, you know, a healthy breakfast recipe? So, you know, just kind of going through that whole thought process. Um, and it really just fit with my personality type. So I you know, discovered it by just the off chance of you know, her offering that to me because that's where she needed support at the time and it just it's like something clicked and it fit and then I started seeing the need as I got deeper into this online community you know you, you start seeing what people do need and bloggers had been using it a lot well business owners were stepping up and doing blogging to you know establish their authority and really just make connections with people and offer that value and so I said, my gosh, you know, this client of mine is getting massive amounts of website traffic organically to her blog. Why can't business owners use it in the same way and use it to grow their business through their blog? They're putting the content out there anyway. And the fact that it is giving your content that limitless shelf life, whereas, you know, as you know, we post on Facebook and in about 45 minutes that post is done and you have to make another, you know, video converts for a little bit longer, but then you, you get months and years out of the content that you create when you put it on Pinterest. So it was for me really nice to say, okay, you're creating all this content. Let's put it somewhere where it lasts because writing is not my strong point. It's something that I have always struggled with in my business. Um, so I'm like, my goodness, if I'm going to write, I want it to last. I want it to stay where people can find it for, you know, as long as possible and not just keep having to get caught up and constantly posting and engaging and, you know, doesn't have as much of the social aspect. So you can use this business tool and kind of be on your way and then keep Facebook and other platforms for really, you know, strengthening those connections on the more social level. So what I want to kind of point out, and I have, my husband and I have had these conversations too, is that going back again to um, leaving teaching, getting into virtual assistance, and a lot of people will say, well, well, you left teaching, like what a bad move, like, and then you got into VA and that wasn't for you either. But if you hadn't have left teaching, you probably wouldn't have landed in being a virtual assistant. No. If you hadn't landed in virtual assistant, you wouldn't have met this particular client who just happened to have you work you on working on a project that ends up being like your zone of genius. Yes. Like, what I absolutely love you. Right. We have to learn how to start like saying yes to like these whispers of, I think there's something else. Let's go pursue it. I think there's more. I don't know what, but I'm going to trust. Well, and it's, it's crazy that you point that out because when I first quit, the plan when I actually quit was I was going to get a job that just wasn't quite as stressful. 
and go back to school because I have a master's in education. We have a local college here. And so the plan was, you know, if I could go and get my specialist, then I'll get on at the college. I'll get my doctorate. I'll teach at the collegiate level. It'll be great. None of that worked out. That was the plan when I quit. And so it, it was, there was not a job to be found. Even the things that I applied for, I was overqualified. No, that's just not what I was supposed to do. This was the and path that I was supposed to take. And it, had it not been in that timing, I never would have gotten the client that led me to where I am now. Ah, oh, this is so good, Jenna. This is so good. And there's so many times and so many people that have this really smart plan, right? You had a very smart plan, a very logical, traditional. It made sense. This is the plan we're going to, yeah, absolutely makes sense. But there was something in your heart saying, mm, but there's something else here, right? Yeah. And so love this. Now you said something um, that I want to dive into about Pinterest. You said it works for my personality. Yes. What does that mean? Um, I have always naturally been very shy. So the, not that you could tell now, <laughs> but the right? social aspect was always a little harder for me. And the time that it took to create all of the content and post in Facebook groups and, you know, interact with people. And what ends up happening is, because this is how it was for me as a virtual assistant, I was going in and kind of trying to find people to work with. Whereas, I mean, and you, you have, you basically have to be, Hey, I'm Jenna and I do Pinterest. Hey, I'm Jenna and I do Pinterest. And it just, it didn't work for me, especially starting out with not feeling that comfortable in this space. And so with Pinterest, people find you, they're going there and they are, you know, searching for ways to make their lives easier and more enjoyable. And by having everything set up with using Pinterest as a search engine, they will then find you and they will, it's more people seeking you out with the content that you're creating being the, the answer to the problem that they have. You're, you're their solution. And so the fact that they are finding you, it, it just was really nice to know, okay, I'm putting my content in a place where people can seek me out instead of me like, constantly introducing myself and, and, and looking for someone that might need my help. It, it works in the opposite way, which is really nice. And you need, you need everything to be well-rounded, but it was super nice to have a place to grow your business that you didn't get sucked into socializing on Facebook all day because it can happen so easily. You get in these conversations and you have the intention of it, it being for your business. And you know sometimes it, it gets off track and you end up really not doing anything to you know, grow your business that day or that hour because you get sucked in. Whereas with Pinterest, it is, you know, full-time business focused activity that can be automated. So then you're not even spending the time to do it, which is amazing. I listened to you explain the two differences and I'm like, why, why did I not go Pinterest sooner? Um, just like I'm so business minded. So Jenna, um, you at some point made the decision that I'm, I'm going to be a Pinterest strategist for other people. I'm going to start a business coaching, strategizing, leading other leaders to utilize this tool. And how did that work for you? And what was your biggest obstacle? Because I, I'm assuming you jump into business ownership. You're like, I'm going to start this business. And there's always fears of, do I know enough? Am I smart enough? Like, is it time? Um, is this going to work? So walk me through what that looked like. I mean, it, it was definitely very scary because going from, you know, I mean, as a virtual assistant, just finding people to help in Facebook groups, first of all, you have zero overhead because it's just your time. And so taking that step of, it's scary to invest in yourself. If you have any self doubt, which who doesn't, then when you think about then putting money into something that you're really not sure about, and it's so non-traditional. And I mean, even now in this day and age, traditional is still very much alive. I mean, I'm in the deep South, so traditional is very much still alive. Um, half the people that I know don't even understand what I do. And so you, you have that, I mean, that's what I'm, I was surrounded with. And then 
I've grown so much with my confidence and, you know, just trusting myself that there was so much doubt of, I didn't even want to call myself a Pinterest strategist because I felt like I wasn't good enough yet. I always, you know, achieved to reach the highest level and then, you know, it's like, well, when I learn a little bit more, when I've worked with more people, when I have more, you know, results to show, then I'll actually have my own business. And you, you really, you'll never be ready. You'll never be ready. If you wait until you, I mean, you just have to believe in yourself and say, I know what I'm doing. You know, if something does come up that I don't know, you know, have that commitment to yourself and to your business that you'll, you'll figure it out because you always can. You never have all the answers. I'm sure you, you know, you feel the same way now, even, even, and even now stuff comes up that we just don't have the answers to. And you just have to trust that you will figure it out and that, you know, you're following the path that you're supposed to be on. Ah, oh, this is so good. So talking about confidence, this is big for so many people, especially in the online, um, internet marketing, uh, entrepreneur, home-based business kind of space. How have you built that confidence? One day at a time, definitely. Um, when I first started, I did not even want to get on the phone with people. I just, it was a hang up. It was a fear that I had that I, oh, I'm going to fumble through my words. If, if I can type it out, then I can, you know, make sure that it's perfect because there was this, there's this whole emphasis on you have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. Every, you know, word that you put out, every time you hit, every picture has to be perfect. Every video has to be perfect. And was that you will your never, that was my expectation on myself. That was your and that's expectation. What I was seeing. And at the time, a lot of what I was seeing in the online space was Instagram perfect pictures. And, you know, just everything was so staged and beautiful. And I'm like, I have two kids. Half the time I'm working with, with you know, my two-year-old on me because she's, she's my little cuddle bug that's attached to me. Um, and I'm like, so there's no, I don't live an Instagram perfect life. And so that, it made me feel like I just wasn't at a point in my life where I could could do that. And the more real I am and the more real I show up, the more connections I make with people because they're not perfect either. And so, and pushing myself knowing that live video converts better. You better, you better suck it up and do it. Sometimes you just have to make the decision to say, you know what, I have to do it because I want this bad enough. I want it bad enough to make myself incredibly uncomfortable and grow in that moment because I'm not going to let it defeat me. I'm not going to let my, you know, personal fears that are, it doesn't matter. What, what, what do I have to lose at that point? You know, you just have to push through so and do it. So what I heard you just say, which is so powerful, Jenna, is that when you are looking at a fear and an activity, going live, starting a new business, like the drive to succeed, the drive to put yourself out there, to share the message, to serve other people has to be stronger than your fear. And so many people are just locked over here focusing on how scary it is instead of focusing on, but what could come? Who might I be able mm -hmm. to serve? How might this message get out in a bigger way? And what I'm hearing you say is you were hearing this back and forth dialogue for every decision and going, but there's more if I just step into it. Yep. Absolutely. So, so good, girl. Tell me about your family. Yes. So I... Yeah, that's, that's a lot of the drive behind what I'm doing is I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. I have two little girls, and I just I want them to know that they can do anything that they want to do. And there are so many more opportunities and possibilities and things they can do with their life because you know, sometimes it's you do feel limited. And you don't – I mean, the types of things that we do here in the online space aren't things that your high school – counselor talks to you about when you're looking at, you know, what job path to take. And so I just, that's been a lot of my drive. And we, um, you know, they, I build my business with my kids right beside me. I 
right over here to one side. I have their little table and chairs where they'll, they'll draw and color and do Play-Doh if I have anything that I have to do. And so it's, it's definitely a family business um, as far as, you know, we, we do it all together and they just are such a big part of it. And I love being able to, you know, have them here with me and, you know, show them what hard work looks like. And, you know, yeah, there've had to be sacrifices where I'll, you know, miss bedtime because I have, you know, a meeting or something that I have to do, but I'm here 24 seven. So it's still a much smaller sacrifice than being gone eight hours a day, feeding them dinner and bath and bed. So it's, it's been amazing for our family as well, because it has just given us more time together. And then, you know, like I said, showing my kids that hard work pays off and, you know, what it actually looks like. Because when you work outside of the home, they know that you go to work, but there's this disconnect in, you know, what are you actually doing all day? And so the fact that my kids can actually see, I mean, I've done live videos with, with both of them right here with me because, you know, that's sometimes that's what it takes. It's real life. You have to do what you have to do, but they get to see and be, you know, part of all that, which is also really amazing. I have never heard somebody articulate it like, like you just did. You know, when we go to work, that disconnect, our kids don't actually know what that means. They just know you're gone. Yeah. And, and you, you have this just like, you have this like cool cucumber, like classy, got it all together kind of vibe about you. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure, cause you're a mom trying to do all the things that it's not always pretty behind the scenes. How do you, how do you balance? How do you keep the mom guilt from creeping in when you say, you know, I, I didn't get to bedtime tonight. How do you balance this work life thing? Um, and still maintain this positiveness, this creative energy that you've got? I make sure that I plan my schedule to where I have that time. Um, like last Friday, we went to the zoo. I had some things that I had to do. The girls went to school. They have like a part-time preschool that they go to. And so, which that helps a lot. That helps with the balance a lot because they have their school time and they have their friends and they get to have that, which is amazing and they love it. And then I can really knock out the bulk of everything I have to do while they're in school. So that having that really helps balance it. Um, but then like a lot of Fridays we'll take off and go, you know, do something together as a family. My husband has the flexibility as well. So last Friday we you knocked out our couple of things we had to do in the morning and then you know, spent the rest of the ended up turning from the day all the way past bedtime. Um, we just made a day out of it. And so, you know, planning my schedule around that to make sure that I have that in really have that real good quality time um, and going and doing special things with them helps a lot. Oh, so good, girl. I have a question for you totally off topic, but I was at a retreat last month, I think it was, and this question came up and it's so fun and insightful. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Well, I don't know if you can see. It would be a flamingo. And it's and just... And what is it? Flamingo. What is it about the flamingo? They always stand out. Like, what are the Do you know of another pink bird? That and I have long legs. And I'm like, I've always been, like, tall and you know, felt awkward. So like I can relate to the flamingo because I feel awkward too, but then they're so beautiful and so unique. So it's sometimes it's okay to be different. Man, girl, that's good. <laughs> so funny little story. This is so fun to learn more about you. Side note to all of you listening, um, Jenna and I have worked together, but I've never really asked her much outside of like what we need to do for business. And so I've been like saving it for today. <laughs> And um, when I was little, the story is that I was terrified of the flamingos at oh the zoo. Isn't that hilarious? Like, who is afraid? And then you go describing them with this, like, this elegance, you know. And uh, I grew up being terrified of these pink <laughs> things. I think that's so funny that we have this flamingo so commonality. Um, Jenna, how can people connect with you online? Yes, so I have my website, and it's jennaliot.com. I can add it in the comments when we're done here. 
Um, and then I have a my private Facebook community where you can come and learn all sorts of all the Pinterest news and everything that's going on and some great business tips with that. And the community is perfectly Pinterest with Jenna Liot. I can also link to that. Yes, let's definitely do that. And if you want to send it to me, I'll put it, I'll like edit it and put it right in. Perfect. And quick side note, who, what kind of business owners uh, are best suited for the Pinterest platform? So anyone that is putting out content. So you definitely have to have, whether it's blog posts or videos. I have a lot of people that will tell me, well, I do Facebook Lives, for instance, but I don't really do a lot of written blog posts. Well, the other great part of Pinterest that I love is I repurpose everything. So if you have those videos and you have a website, you just haven't really developed a blog yet, take those videos and make a vlog, the video blog out of it. And then you can, you know, get that content out there for people to, to see for, you know, longer than the 24 hours that you have it even on YouTube. Um, and then you, want to make sure that you have a way to capture people's email addresses and keep that connection going because you want to make sure there's that whole way to stay connected with them. You don't want people just you know, pinging over to your website to read your blog post or watch your video and then leaving. Um, so just kind of some key pieces that you need to have set in place would be like a website. And then you want to make sure that you're going to have a way to get those email addresses so that you can really continue to grow those relationships. Ah, oh, you're such a master, my friend. Uh, so Jenna Proctor, just an honor to have you. And we will connect both website and the Facebook community so that you can get involved. Follow Jenna, find her. Um, feel free to connect and ask questions. I see people already yes. wanting a little bit more information from you. Um, if you loved this video and you want more great uh, videos, content, training ideas like this, go to heatherquizzle.tv. We'll deliver those right in your inbox every Saturday morning. Jenna, just such a pleasure and an honor to know you and have you as my Pinterest strategist. Absolutely. Thank I'm so, so much. Got connected. Yes. All right, everybody. Have a great one. Appreciate you being here. Mwah.